Hi guys, welcome to another video. Um, I've been saving up some acquisitions for the tab reference collection and I thought I would uh, take a look at some of them in this episode. So we won't be doing it in depth, but we'll have a flick through some of them and take a look at um, some of the new acquisitions. Okay. So these have been gathering for the last month perhaps and I've been that busy I just haven't had a chance to, to look at most of them so this is exciting because I've largely forgotten what I was ordering anyway ah ok so these are a couple of copies of the uh, Vickers Medium Machine Gun manual from 51 which I think might be the last Vickers manual that was put together ritual from the Vickers gun collection will correct me on that one if I'm wrong but yeah so we've got part one which covers mechanical subjects and part two which looks at drills and training so part one is all about how the gun works and all the various intricacies so there's the long range dial sight what a great diagram this one has had its amendments pasted in so we can see where the, I guess was CSM Shipton, has scribbled out the incorrect bits and added in his amendments. Which you see sometimes and then sometimes people have just tucked the amendment sheets in the back. There you go, another correction. So they can be quite loose. So you have to be really careful with them because they're over 60 years old now at this point. Pasted in with glue and water probably, so uh, flat and water. Let's take a look at the content page. So we have general description characteristics of gun and tripod, how to strip the gun down, maintenance of the gun, spares and repairs, media action drills and an explanation of the mechanism stoppages instrument aiming instrument tests and we've got some of the uh, posters that are available there listed so let's take a look see what we've got there's the lock There's the gun itself. So let's take a look at the second one. This one's drills and training. More corrections. I'm sure Rich has got a video on these already. But we'll take a look at them again in the future. When we look at the Vickers gun in more, more depth. Some good images there. Gun mounted below low cover, firing through a hedgerow. There we go, mounting the gun on the lowest service position. Sort of a, a classic position there, with the number two supporting the number one's back. Nice to see it in a carrier. So in this one we have gun drills, advanced machine gun handling, visual training, section drills, indirect fire drills, uh, battle procedure, and then uh, some appendices as well. So yeah, this is printed in 51, so this is around the time of the Korean War. Uh, I think I'm right in saying that at this point the British Army was basically relearning some of the, the, the lessons lost after World War II. 
um, from chats I've had with Rich about this. So yeah, so that's really nice to have in the collection. Let's take a look at the next one. So this one This one is uh, Home Guard Instruction number 51 and there's I think there's almost 90 of these maybe more, I don't know um, but this one let's take a look This one covers uh, Battlecraft. So we've got organization of home golf battle drills, uh, the object and description of a battle drill, uh, use of live ammunition, ground for training, and then we have Battlecraft, um, crossing obstacles, using cover, etc. Individual training of uh, junior leaders, uh, use of live, uh, live ammunition, and then some safety procedures as well. So yeah, this is really interesting to look at um, how the Home Guard was actually trained uh, to fight the various actions that they expected to be fighting at various stages of the war. So the the tactics changed as the war went on. So immediately we've got a nice mention of uh, the Browning automatic rifle, which was one of the key light weapons of the, the Home Guard. As I say, I'll take a proper look at all of these in future videos on their own, but it's nice just to take a quick flick through and show you guys what's coming up. Hopefully these all get digitised at some point when I have the, the time and funds to do it, but at the moment I don't, just don't have the time. So, uh, section 26 here uh, for live ammunition training. Demonstration of home guard weapons and penetration, um, which demonstrates what individual small arms fire can, can penetrate, which is really interesting. So there we go. Alright, what have we got next? Next up we have another home guard instruction. And um, this one dates from 1943 whereas the previous one dated from 1942. So let's take a little look at this one. It's quite well sealed. Just a very short one. Um, we have uh, notes and report of functioning of small arms in Tunisia, which is interesting. Uh, maximum ranges of home guard weapons, uh, individual battle practices, the 29mm spigot mortar practice in air ammunition, the Browning automatic rifle, and amendments to home guard instruction number 40. So, this one, uh, you can see why I bought this. Uh, not only is it small arms, but we've also got a mention of a blacker bombard. So maximum ranges for home guard weapons. So we've got a rifle, 400 yards, 200 yards at best. LMG and MMG, 500. Sten, 50, but best at 10 to 20. Revolver, 40, but best at 50. Interesting. Uh, Northover projector with a 68 grenade, 60. 
uh, with a sip uh, at 200 and a Mills bomb 36 grenade at 150. That's really interesting. Oh, cool. So you get the whole um, gambit of sub artillery. So you got uh, North Over Projector, Blacker Bombard, and the Smith Gun. So the Smith Gun with an 8 pound HE anti personnel, 650 yards. 6 pound HE anti tank, 200 yards. And at this point in the war, some Home Guard units were uh, receiving uh, 2 pounder anti tank guns, which are obviously being replaced by the, the 6 pounder um, with the regular army. So that's really interesting. Okay, what else have we got in here? Method of loading the Northover projector. That's really interesting too. So it talks about how to load with the number 36 and number 68 grenades. And then this is a uh, target frame. See how it raises and lowers from the butts. And then what else have we got here? Oh cool, look at that, it's a Sten gun magazine. It completely illustrated. Safety precautions for when firing the Sten magazine, uh, the Sten machine carbine rather. So this is literally taken from the Sten's small arms training pamphlet. And on the other page we have uh, the spigot mortar and the Browning automatic rifle. Fatal accidents have occurred because practice inert and drill ammunition have been confused. The former may be held by units either with the original markings as given in uh, small arms training manual pamphlet number 23 or new given in pamphlet 4a which was an amendment uh, proper precautions must be taken including the inspection of ammunition when t training with practice and air bombs since they are armed with a propellant charge so some are just for uh, training to load and unload the weapon um, and then others are for actual in air firing So there we go, that's a really interesting one. Let's take a look at this sizable one. Very well wrapped. So what we got here? We've got ah, this is exceptionally cool. This is the one I've been looking forward to taking a look at. Let's just move this to one side for a second. So this is for the 120mm Mobat, which was a recoilless rifle used by the, um, the British Army throughout the Cold War in various formats. So yeah, let's just see if there should be an image of it in here to show you guys exactly what it looks like. Lots of corrections again, pasted in, notes made. Which is always really interesting to see how things change and how individual soldiers sort of corrected their manuals. Like this, this one's been done really neatly. Look at that, look at that there. So we have uh, general introduction, characteristics, designations, etc. Uh, a description, gun drills, stripping, mechanism, servicing, laying and aiming, zeroing, fire controls, manhandling, ammunition, the gun pit, and anti-tank range cards. Even an abandoning drill. That's interesting. Don't believe there's a name on this one. No, no name on this one. Yeah, so hopefully this is one I'll be able to take a look at again in the future. And also I'm hoping to take a look at a Wombat or a Mobat uh, 
in person in the near future as well. Because they're a British weapon from the Cold War that's relatively unknown. Let's take a look at the next from that parcel. So here we have a, another Home Guard instruction. This is number 26 from 1941. And there's a little pencil note at the top there that says, this has gone out to all sections. So we've got everything from um, firing on aircraft to the, to the foresight of the, the BAR to care of arms and homemade grenades it actually says the grenades to be issued to the home guard will be restricted in due course to recognized army types meanwhile the production of unauthorized homemade grenades must cease so this is in the early stages of the, uh, the home guard where they were improvising their own weapons making you know, hand grenades and molotovs so basically this is saying stop making your own and wait for the army to issue with some grenades Inside we've got some more interesting stuff. We have a little section on uh, the 0.300 inch Browning machine gun, which we've just done a video on, looking at the uh, the, the spares uh, sort of pamphlet that combines both UK and US nomenclature. Then we've got a little section on shotguns and ball ammunition, and a mention of the LDB, the former name of the Home Guard. Uh, American ammunition, some issues with projectiles falling out of cases. A nice little section on uh, the Northover projector and how to clean it. Uh, and then some sections on films available for training. And on the back here we have some amendments as well that are listed for earlier Home Guard instructions. So that's just a really simple little three or four page um, booklet, but there's some really interesting little tidbits of information there that give context to how the Home Guard were operating in 1941. So this one, this next one, I'm really excited about. This is a nuclear handbook for instructors and staff officers. This was uh, originally printed in 57, but it was uh, reissued with amendments in, I believe, 65, yeah, 63. And what it includes is just absolutely everything the British officer needed to know about nuclear weapons and nuclear warfare in the early 60s. So it's packed full of tables, graphs, diagrams, all sorts. So let's take a quick look at the uh, contents. So we have elementary nuclear physics. Everyone needs to know the basics on nuclear physics. Uh, effects of an airburst nuclear explosion. Uh, protection against airbursts, nuclear explosions other than airbursts, including ground bursts, underground bursts, and underwater bursts. Residual radiation, how to protect against it. Uh, medical aspects, we've got about five pages there on flash blindness, blast injuries and injuries from radioactivity so pretty grim stuff megaton weapons assessment of casualties and damage and some appendices as well and protection against fire so as you can see from this list of tables there are literally dozens and dozens of tables and graphs and then we have lots of illustrations and photographs as well The purpose of this book is to provide information on the effects of nuclear weapons for all officers who require more advanced knowledge than is given in precautions against nuclear attack. It is deliberately written in simple language so that it may be understood by those who have not had a scientific education. So let's take a little flick through this. So immediately we are confronted by some, some tables very complex. If this is simple for the you know those who haven't had a scientific education, then this is pretty pretty advanced stuff. Some photographs of Hiroshima. My God, is that before and after? Wow, that's a before and after photograph. Uh, 
uh, little appendices section, MBC protection, etc. Path of radiation fallout. Okay. So I I had to pick this up because I, as, along with small arms, I have like a a real interest in nuclear Cold War history as well. And you'll have seen some of the videos we did on earlier pamphlets. And we have quite a few in the collection now. I think we have about four, maybe five. Um, so future reference collection videos will feature those. But this one is definitely the most in-depth by far. We've got some uh, other ones from the US um, and some home defense, uh, civil defense rather, and, and British Army ones. Um, but as I say, this is by far the most in-depth. This looks like a map. Okay. So this is a plot of a, uh, a bomb being dropped on Southampton. So up here we've got GZ, ground zero, A and B. So this must be uh, two separate drops, one on Eastleigh and then one on Southampton itself. Wow. That is really interesting. And it's in fantastic condition as well. Really fantastic. So I'll be looking forward to taking a proper look at this one in more detail because there's so many sort of diagrams and, and images in here and so much information. Yield tables and God knows what. Chronological development of an underwater burst two and a half minutes after detonation. So it creates a tsunami effect. Wow. Lots and lots of graphs. And then some images from Nagasaki and Hiroshima showing blast damage from from those but the the bombs dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima are uh, would pale in comparison to what troops were facing in in the 60s be absolutely fascinating to look, take a look through. And finally we have something that came all the way from France. This is something I just chanced upon. I'm very excited. Take a look at it. It's not in the best condition if I remember rightly. But it is a manual for the Mat 49. From the Ecole application, the Frontier. So there we go. Le Pistolet Mitrieux Mat 49. A little bit of water damage, but nothing too serious. So yes, this one I was excited to get a hold of because I don't really have anything French in the, the reference collection at the moment. So um, got some German items, but nothing French. A little bit of damage on the back cover there. Accessories. Little diagram of the, the Mat 49's uh, grip safety. There we go, that's about it. It's a very simple little manual. 
and we'll take a look at this one as well as the others in a future video. So, thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the look at some of these interesting items that I've procured over the last month or so. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and if you'd like to support the project, and if you'd like to support the project you can do so via Patreon. Uh, your help there enables us to collect these really interesting items and hopefully eventually we'll be able to digitize and make the collection available uh, as PDFs etc in the future. So thanks again for watching, catch you next time.